Okay, one of the questions I get asked most of all, whether it's on YouTube or LinkedIn or via email is, Dave, should I learn R or should I learn Python? Now, years ago, the answer to that question was easy. Just learn R. But with the rise of Python, it's a little more complicated. And the reason why it's complicated is mainly because of hiring managers. Now, me, myself, as an analytics hiring manager, I don't really care. If you know R or you know Python, great. If you happen to know Python, I'm going to make you learn R. That's just the way I roll. However, a lot of companies, a lot of hiring managers, a lot of HR departments have very specific requirements. Ergo, the question is a little bit more complicated now than it used to be. So I want to run you guys through how I look at it when I answer these questions and say, look, given your situation, which of these two technologies is probably best for you, R or Python? So here we have the decision workflow that I use when I talk to folks about whether they should learn R or whether they should learn Python. And once again, it's complicated because it's really based on two things. One, what's your background? And two, what are your career goals? So first and foremost, the first question that I get to is, do you know data analysis? Are you brand new to the analytics space? And if you are, my answer these days is simple. Go learn data analysis with Excel. Learn how to do process behavior charts. Learn how to do linear regression. Learn how to do more advanced data visualizations. And then logistic regression. Those things are wickedly easy to do in Excel. And what that allows you to do is concentrate on the core concepts. These core concepts translate into R or Python if that's the way you decide to go later on in your career, whether you're working at Google as a data scientist or as a business analyst in XYZ Corp. It doesn't matter. You do not waste any time at all learning the analysis fundamentals using Excel. Okay, after that, you say, hey, do you know data analysis? Nope, learned it in Excel. Come back down and we say, do you know SQL? If you don't know Excel and you don't know SQL, those are the two things you should learn first because they will cement the fundamentals of doing analytics in the real world day in and day out. So you learn SQL and you learn analytics in Excel and you're golden. Okay, so the next step you have to ask is, what is the nature of your goal? So for example, I do talk to folks that are in the business and they're not necessarily interested in becoming true analytics professionals, and I'm air quoting, true analytics professionals, and that's the thing that you do. Analytics is your specialization. Let's say, for example, you work in logistics in the supply chain organization, and you just want to be a very data literate logistics manager because you know that will help you make more business impact. Okay, cool. So you've got the base idea of analytics from Excel, you've got SQL skills, and then you say, okay, do I wanna take it to the next level? If I do, then R is the ticket for you. And that's based on my experience teaching hundreds of working professionals. Believe it or not, R is actually easier to learn than Python if you have no coding background. And I'm making an implicit assumption here that a business professional doesn't have an object-oriented coding background. If that's you, different story. But if it's not, if you don't have that OO background, R is easier. It, trust me, it is. Believe it or not, it's very easy. And the reason for this is simple. Python is a general purpose programming language. It has data, machine learning, and analytics capabilities bolted on, but at base, it is a general purpose object-oriented programming language. So there's a steep learning curve for Python in that regard. Whereas in R, actually you don't have that steep of a learning curve. It's very, very much like Excel, believe it or not. And I'm using that term an awful lot, I apologize. But it's true. R is very easy to pick up if you already know Excel and you learn R in the right way. So moving on, if you do know code, if you do have a background in object-oriented programming through, let's say, Java or c -sharp, or any other number of object-oriented programming language, languages, then the answer is simple. Learn Python, because you've already scaled the steepest part of the learning curve. Python is an OO language. It has all the normal constructs that you would see in an OO programming language. All you do is just learn the subtleties of Python. And then, of course, the libraries, the machine learning libraries, the analytics libraries. You'd have to do that in R as well. So why not just learn Python? Now, sometimes you'll notice 
that Python is the standard, either explicitly or implicitly. And how you can figure that out is just look at the job descriptions. If you look at job descriptions that you're interested in working yourself into, and they all say Python, none of them say R, none of them say anything else, they all say Python, well, the answer is pretty simple. You should probably learn Python. Now, this is a big one. FANG, if you're not familiar with it, stands for Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. I use FANG as a, uh, as a placeholder for this idea of big tech companies, because you can also include Apple, and you can also include Microsoft in this mix. So if you want to work at a big tech company, if that's your dream, if that's your goal, you want to work at Google, let's say, you should learn Python. Right? You don't already know code. If you're going to take the time to compete, which by the way, getting data science and analytics jobs at these companies is very, very difficult. The competition is stiff. Then you should learn Python and you should learn it well. Okay, next up, if you're not interested in working in at a FANG company, one of the big tech companies, then you have to ask yourself, is your goal to be a business analyst? Now, you'll notice that data scientist does not show up anywhere on this flowchart. And that's my own personal philosophy. I don't consider myself a data scientist anymore. Uh, you might have seen me post that on LinkedIn a while back. I consider myself an analytics professional. And I self-proclaim that I am a business analyst. I am a very technical business analyst. I have a background in software engineering and architecture and all these cool things. So I'm a very technical business analyst, but generally speaking, that's what I am. I use my technical skills, I use my knowledge of machine learning and statistics and all these other things to analyze the business. That's what I do. So if that's what you want to do, then I would argue R. R is, is the right thing for you. R is the right thing. It's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of data analysis, in terms of how much effort you have to do to learn the programming language. That being said, if your goal is not to be a business analyst, but your goal is to be a machine learning engineer, this is a relatively new role. These are the folks that are responsible for actually taking machine learning models to production and productionalizing them. Uh, that's something I do, um, but not very often. That's not the bulk of my job. So I would not consider myself an ML engineer, even though I do some ML engineering-like things. I wouldn't consider myself an ML engineer. A machine learning engineer these days, Python is the de facto standard. So that's what you should learn. And then lastly, if none of these things describes you, describes your background or describes where you're going, you have to ask yourself, are you sure you want to do this at all? Because quite frankly, if none of these things apply to you, and I racked my brain trying to find out a scenario where that would be the case, and I couldn't think of one, then really all you need is these two things. And you'll go really, really far. With SQL and Excel, you can analyze an awful lot of stuff. I have a video on my YouTube channel that shows some of the capabilities, just a very, just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Excel and SQL. You can do a lot. So if none of these things classifies you, ask yourself, are you sure you want to do this? Okay, that's it for this video, short and sweet. I want you all to stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.